has come to our family. I'm Reginald Gigington, and you can call me Reggie. And today, I'll be continuing a painting journey through the miniatures of the Darkest Dungeon board game by Mythic Games. Tardif the Bounty Hunter is one of my favorite heroes in Darkest Dungeon. His sleek, menacing, and mysterious aesthetic make for an intimidating yet awesome character. And alongside him, Audrey the Grave Robber is a dangerous and stealthy assassin. The two make a great combo in-game, with them both being high-damage single-target eliminators, and today we'll be painting them both. To begin with, I've primed both miniatures in black, as is the tradition. We'll be starting by doing the Bounty Hunter. The first step will be lead belcher on all of the steel parts, the helmet, the hauberk, etc. Additionally, his axe and the flashbangs on his hip, and the hook on his rope. At the same time, we're going to do the leather armor as well, for which we'll be using a one-to-one -one mix of scrag brown and steel legion drab to make a nougat-y orange leather. Next, I'm going to try something a little experimental. We're going to apply Phoenician purple to all of the dark leather parts. That's his belt, the face mask, the boots, and the sash. This may seem odd, but trust me when I say that this technique will work out in the end. Otherwise, we're also going to apply Wraithbone to the sleeves in the scroll on his bandolier. Now we're going to use Rackarth Flesh on the rope. Here's where that purple comes back into play. The next step is going to be Thin Down Black Templar applied over all of the purple spots. Now contrast paints don't thin down with water. They require a special technical paint called Contrast Medium, which is essentially transparent contrast paint so you can reduce the ratio of pigment to medium you're applying to the model. We're going to cover the purple parts with the thinned black, and as a result, we're going to end up with a black that has a purple undertone that shines through, which is very accurate to how it's depicted in the original art. Now we're going to wash the mini, using a black wash all over except for the black leather parts, which we don't need any wash for, and the scroll, which gets a brown wash. After this is dry, go back and apply a second layer of black wash to just the flashbangs. We're going to brighten him back up now using Scrag Brown on the Gambeson and Wraithbone on the sleeves once again. What you're going to try to do for the Gambeson is essentially make little upside down L's on the edge of each rectangular section. Also, take this time to hit the gloves, highlighting each finger and the top side of the wrist. Real quick, we're going to use Lead Belcher to highlight some of the silver parts, like the top of the helmet and a few of the select scales of his chainmail. That's all for the Bounty Hunter. Now we just apply the black shadows in the standard basing scheme. 
If you want to give it an extra pop, however, you can add a bit of corn red and dry stippling to his hook for a blood splatter, though that's an optional step. With Tardif done, let's move on to Audrey. I want to apologize in advance. Halfway through painting her, my camera began to malfunction, and as a result, the latter half of her tutorial is very dark. I've attempted to rebalance the brightness of the footage after the fact, but it will still likely be a little noticeable, which is a pity, because I think she turned out very good, and I wish the footage reflected that. To start, we're going to use Thunderhawk Blue on the jacket, and in spite of what the footage shows, use Steel Legion Drab on the pants. I use Wraithbone in an effort to try something experimental with a contrast paint later, but ultimately it comes out unsuccessfully, and you'd be better off skipping that failed step and going straight to what I do later, i.e. Steel Legion Drab. Now we're going to do the pickaxe, scrag brown for the handle and lead belcher for the head. Next is Rackarth flesh, all over the blouse and any parts that will later become leather, like the belts, boots, gloves, and hat. Also make sure to hit the wrapped grip of her pickaxe. For her skin and hair, we're using Cadian Flesh Tone and Buff. If you painted Margaret the Musketeer along with my tutorial, you know exactly how to do it. Now comes the wash, which is going to be an all over black wash except for the skin which receives flesh wash. We're going to use Thin Down Skeleton Horde now, applied over the pants. In my first effort, using a lighter, off-white base of Wraithbone, the result came out too orangey and light. Steel Legion, on the other hand, has the right base tone of brown for this coat of contrast paint. The areas heavy in pigment end up in a burnt orange-brown color, and the areas without as much pigment return their original medium brown. Now comes the leather parts, and we're going to do all of them with a very slightly thinned Cygor Brown. Don't thin it too much, just to mix a drop of contrast medium into some Cygor Brown on your palette, and apply that evenly all over the exposed beige parts, except for the pickaxe grip.
To highlight her jacket, apply Thunderhawk Blue on some of the ridges and upward facing planes, then a 1 to 1 mix of Somber Grey and Thunderhawk Blue on some of the edges. For her hair, we're reapplying buff, following the strands and avoiding the recesses. Don't forget the underside of her hair, above her jacket. In spite of how the model looks, hair isn't a solid block, meaning light filters through it. Therefore, we gotta highlight the underside too. Now we're going to use Cadian Flesh Tone, followed by Kislev Flesh, in order to highlight the face and fingers. Cadian Flesh Tone goes all over the non-recessed areas, and Kislev Flesh dots her cheeks, nose, chin, and fingertips. Don't forget the buttons on her jacket or the buckles on her hat, for which we're using Rune Lord Brass. And once we apply the shadows and paint the base, that finishes up Audrey the Grave Robber. And there you have it, both Bounty Hunter and Grave Robber are done. I've always found the pair entertaining as a combination, both mechanically as well as narratively, with one being a stoic crime fighter and the other criminal herself. As always, only paint as fast as you're comfortable going, and always remember that you can go back and paint over your mistakes or accidents. Have fun painting your Darkest Dungeon miniatures, and feel free to tag me on Instagram, at ReggieGeek, to show me how yours turn out. Links to my affiliated socials can be found in the description. Feel free to subscribe or like the video if you enjoyed it, and I'll see you soon with another painting tutorial.